Hello again, friends. Thank you for joining me once again. If you can't tell by the beard I'm attempting to grow here, it is winter, and it is a very cold winter day here and throughout the Midwest. We're talking about temperatures in the low single digits, and I am going to be tasting with you one of my favorite whiskeys to cozy up with on a cold winter day, which is a single grain whiskey. And what we have today is this Invergordon 46-year-old single grain scotch whiskey from Single Cask Nation. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Invergordon Distillery was built in 1961, and it is a Highlands distillery, which is interesting because we think of grain distilleries being mostly in the lowlands, but this is up in the Highlands. It's close to other uh, distilleries that you might be aware of, such as Glenmorangie, and uh, it's owned by White and McKay, who took it over uh, in hostile takeover in 1993. Uh, that company is now owned by uh, a Filipino conglomerate, as far as I know, but that's neither here nor there. What we care about is the whiskey in the glass. So uh, this was distilled in 1974, so long time back. Uh, they bottled it in September of 2020, and it comes from an ex-bourbon hogshead. Now, you guys will know that I love uh, the purity of flavors that you get when you've got a long maturation in, a, in an ex-bourbon cask. So uh, in terms of the whiskey itself, a few technical stats before we dive right in here. So uh, they ferment for 70 hours. Uh, they have three coffee stills at Invergordon, and the ABV off the stills is 94.4%. So this is exactly the opposite of what you think of when you think of a small, old, you know, Scotch whiskey distillery with a pot still. And um, this is this is a production plant. It is uh, an industrial process through and through. Um, and so what comes off the stills, and by the way, they fill casks at 71%, but what comes off the stills is not particularly compelling to you and me, and it's only after these many decades, and we've got almost five decades of maturation here, that you start to get that those sublime flavors and, and some of that really that really special uh, nuance for which very mature grain whiskey is renowned. So uh, what else can I tell you about this one? It is a single cask, as I said, uh, number 7844000057. By the way, all this will be in the uh, detail accompanying the review on www.malt-review.com, so please head on over there and check that out if you haven't already. But um, it is 46 years old, as I said, 46.2% ABV, and um, I paid almost 300 bucks for this one. So these things are not are not cheap, but again, you're talking about something that, that spent uh, you know, the better part of, of five decades in the cask. So uh, you get what you pay for, hopefully. We'll see. Yeah, so immediately, you know, this changes every time I have it. And, you know, I've had it at when the bottle was a little bit cooler. This one has warmed up a bit. But right now I'm getting like a real um, a butterscotch, just a really, really rich note. And that's something that's consistent through the best older grain whiskeys that I've tried, where you really, um, you get this great kind of just just richness and um the grains, by the way, in this case, are, are wheat and corn, not malted barley, as you would expect in Scotch whiskey. And that, you know, you can you can think of this in terms of, you know, as a component of a blend, it, it is going to provide a lot different flavors than you would get from um, distilling malted barley. But yeah, just, um, it's just so creamy and, and rich. And again, this are... These are really comfort drams for me when I when I'm drinking grain whiskey. It's like I said, I, you know, I'm cozying up on the couch. I'm taking it real easy. This isn't this isn't something that's necessarily meant to be challenging the intellect so much as just um, you know, it's got some complexity there, but it's 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 just nice. It's just really really cheery. I think in a, a previous review, I actually uh, likened it to like a, you know, it's like the liquid equivalent of a chicken pot pie or you know, a, a fuzzy pair of socks. Just just something to make you feel better. So. There, there are some other notes playing in here. You know, there's there's this roastiness. There's, um, you know, when I had this at, at a lower temperature, it was uh, it was interesting. I was getting some of that funk of like a um, like an old white burgundy. If you guys have had like a like a couple decades old white burgundy, they get these really. Not everybody likes it, but it's a it's an aroma profile that I I really like. And yeah, there's some there's some more here. So I got some exotic spicy notes. I got some cardamom, some ginger, you know, stuff you might might use in your Indian cooking in your curry. Yeah, it's it's good complexity. Again, the, the the dominant note is really that 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 real butterscotchy kind of sweet and sweet and rich note. But there's there's a lot of other stuff going on around here. So I'm gonna uh, go do my normal tasting progression here. I'm just gonna give this a little kiss. Yeah, there's not there's not very much at the front of the palate. I'll tell you, it's. Uh, Yeah, 
Yeah. There's a little bit, there's a very, very, very faint sweetness at the at the very beginning of this one, but no, mostly it's, you know. Mm. So it's interesting. I was expecting that that richness from the nose to come back, and it and it doesn't really. I mean, you've got got a little bit of it, maybe on the finish, but mm. it's very high toned on the palate. A lot more of that that citrus fruit. Um, you've got uh, some some stern woodiness. There's like some some very um, more piquant woodiness. a bit of that spice and, and a slight a slightly butterscotchy aspect to it uh, into the finish but no you know for the most part I really um, this tacks a lot more sort of um, elegance not the right word because that makes it sound like like other ones are sloppy but it's mm, it's very lean very pure mm. So my last um, Invergordon single grain of, of any age was uh, the Boutique whiskey, and those were 110 for a bottle half this size, so roughly 220. And again, I said I paid 300 for this one. So, I mean, that one was really was stunning. That was just that was just everything you'd want. This has this has a lot of nice aspects to it. I uh, I don't think it's my my favorite grain whiskey I ever tried, but it it's very good. I mean, there's no. There's no off notes. There's nothing wrong with this one. Um, you know, I don't. I don't think it spent like too long in the cask, but it's just mm. the flavor profile is just exceedingly subtle. It's um, it really takes some some concentrated tasting. Nose is great. I mean, the nose is, is wonderful um, and uh, everything everything you could want. Um, on the palate, it's a little more a little more straightforward, a little bit less diverse in terms of the amount of flavors you're getting. The texture is kind of kind of consistent throughout. Mm. Not as much of that richness, which um, again I tend to prefer in grain whiskey. So, you know, thinking about how I'm going to score this one, um, like I said, it's 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 a pretty expensive drop. You do get um, something for what you're paying for. I mean, again, spent a whole ton of time in, in the cask, and and you know, particularly on the nose, I think that that's allowed it to um, really evolve some some charming and wonderful flavors. And this is one you almost don't want to. Stop nosing. There's like a lemongrass note in here. That kind of that like very faintly spicy accent that you sometimes add to like if you're cooking stir fry. Um, it's interesting if I if I breathe in through my nose as I'm tasting, I get maybe that's just just me fooling myself. But I am I am sensing more of that butterscotch up front. Um, that 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 really rich creaminess. But no, this is this is very um, very pert on the palate. I think would be a good way to put this. So, mm. I'm gonna be interested to see what you all think of this. I mean, this is this is a big bottle here. I've got plenty left, as you can see, and I'm always I'm always happy to share. So I'll be sending this out to friends and acquaintances. And you know, people when I when I posted this on social media, uh, you know, initially people were like, "Oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine drinking a whiskey that was." Almost fifty years old. Um, these these things are not to be found every day, and that's you know partially explains the the price premium. But um, they're really incredible for um, you know what you what you end up getting out of the bottle. And this one is is uh, something I'm grateful to have tried, grateful to have, grateful to be able to share with folks uh, like your good selves. Um, so you know for that uh, we'll say cheers to Jason Joshua of Single Cask Nation and. Um, Cheers to you all for spending some time with me today and, and tasting this wonderful whiskey. So, um, you know, please uh, comment. Please check out the article and uh, the review on maltreview.com. And, um, you know, just as always, guys, I'm so grateful for the, the fact that we can just spend a couple minutes here visiting and, and just sharing some whiskey. So uh, for that, cheers to you all and stay warm, please. Take care.